Good morning, everyone. My name is João Almeida. I'm the EMEA Fast Track uh, Manager, and I'll be your host today. So, welcome to the Unified Interface Playbook Chapter One. Um, this presentation is a, fir is a first chapter in a series of helpful content as part of the Unified Interface Playbook. So this is the first session that has happened today. Next session will be on the 26th of July with Chapter 2. Um, hopefully this presentation will uh, assist you with your transition to the Unified Interface and how to position to your business users. So with no more ado, I will hand it over to Nikita Polyakov, is a Senior Fast Track Solution Architect. So Nikita, welcome and take it away. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about the first chapter, Initiate, of the Unified Interface Playbook. Now in this chapter, we're going to talk about starting the right conversations and giving you the information needed to, to begin this journey. The overall playbook is intended to help you plan, execute, and transition the migration from web client to the Unified Interface. We're going to have an exciting community coming up for you for the Unified Interface that's going to have the full playbook, white papers, a lot of useful content and videos, an interaction forum, and blogs. So check back that link often as we, con as we continue producing content. Now you see that this chapter is just part of the series of chapters that we have introducing to you that is going to get you through initiate, explore, transition, and optimize conversations for your business. In this first chapter, we're going to take a moment to understand the unified interface. We're going to make sure that you see the value of moving to the unified interface and how will be able to assist you in, in your business applications. So first, what is Unified Interface? Unified Interface is our new presentation client we use across all of our applications in Dynamics 365 customer engagement. To give you a little bit more context of Dynamics 365 and Power Platform, Dynamics 365 customer engagement is a suite of business applications serving various customer engagement needs, products like sales, customer service, marketing, field service, and our over-expanding suite of products, including some of the exciting uh, uh, developments in space of AI, virtual reality, and augmented reality that we're providing as products, ready to use products for the business. Now, all those applications run on common data service. This is where all of your business rules, logic, and all the functionality runs in your data. This model-driven applications is the new way of designing applications on top of this system. And the new unified interface is what runs all these applications that span across desktop, mobile, and app for Outlook. Now, if you've seen our Power Platform presentations, this Canvas applications, this exciting new UI that you could be able to provide, you can leverage right within the same ecosystem when you join it into the Unified Interface. There's been various access points through Dynamics 365 customer engagement application. We know that obviously your desktop web experience is important to your users. We have a market uh, leading integration with Outlook and various experiences across mobile applications that we have in the past. If you've been with us for a few versions, you know that Dynamics 365 customer engagement had a number of experiences across these um, access uh, points. We obviously have the web client driving our desktop web applications. We have a mobile client application uh, for mobile tablets and phones and an experience within Outlook. And all those experiences run your customization, security, business rules underneath the covers within the platform itself and these are just, if you think of them as just different players on top of that application. Now, if you experienced these applications before and customized them, you know that there's differences between the web client and the mobile application in terms of features and compatibility. And you had to deal a lot with that in our previous versions. As we launched our latest version of Dynamics 365 customer engagement, today's versions that all of our customers are running on today, we've unified all of those applications under unified interface. We provided a new modern responsive web experience that spans from desktop browsers to mobile browsers and everything in between. And we provide rich applications using that same exact engine for tablets and phones and the modern app for Outlook, so keeping the web client as well for you. It's important to understand the reasons why Microsoft invented in, invested in the unified interface and where the future direction is. Now, over the life cycle of Dynamics 365, we needed to update and modernize as the web technology moved forward. We're using the latest platform of the web technology uh, to fuel our new application on Unified Interface and using the latest user experience design that's available 
uh, to us as users expect to be on the latest and freshest experiences. We also expanded and are able to handle a broader range of accessibility standards. And it's a very important tool in Microsoft for us to serve you and your users anywhere they are and with, that, with any accessibility needs as they see. We also needed to reduce the complexity and costs and times delays that were caused by the fact that all these applications had different frameworks, code, and technologies used within them. And they required us to actually have four code bases underneath the covers, had different teams working on those, which reduced our ability to address new features, bugs, and provide you uh, a best experience. As we talked about, even you had to be impacted by that because you had differences in the way that those engines rendered your code and some of your configurations, and that impacted your ability to go to market as quick as possible across those various um, access points. It's important that while web client is still available, it's still available to actually provide you a platform to be able to make the transition to the unified interface. The unified interface is a strategic direction and our only primary uh, focus for where we move forward as we're introducing new features and as we're planning our future roadmap investments. As you can see here, we're not making investments into the web client. If you looked at our release plans and notes around the last few releases, we haven't made any improvements to the web client. And this should be definite call to action for you to begin your migration journey today. As you see that in the future, we're gonna be moving away from the web client and focusing uh, all of our customers on the unified interface. Let's dive into some of the more detailed reasons why you should move to the unified interface. You should care about the unified interface for a number of reasons. First of all, is actually optimizing your existing investment. What's important about this application is that it's actually just a new UI, new UI that coexists within your existing application today. So your business rules, everything you've already configured continues to operate. This experience is already available today and you can start to leverage it within your existing investment, but you get to upscale and supercharge your investment. You get to introduce a new exciting UI for your users. And that's important if you needed to relaunch and breathe life into, you, into your program. Um, that you're operating within your business and introduce a new exciting UI as our end users expect to have fresh, crisp experiences within their applications, just like they do in their consumer space. Now, none of that within the business application is as relevant as making sure that you can introduce productivity enhancements and making sure that I'm able to accomplish my task better and be able to service what I need to do within the business application. I'm able to also, because of our investment in the latest web technologies, improve the performance of actually being able to accomplish some of these tasks. Microsoft has already invested in all of our applications and all of our first party applications like sales, customer service, marketing, latest version of field service, are all using the unified interface to deliver the applications. So you'll see them today already in your environment, ready to use and onboard to. And our new customers are starting this journey with us own these applications today. So again, it's important to understand that we're not making investments in new features into the web client. Now, as we introduce the unified interface, it has a number of advantages over the web client. The unified interface has a new UI, has a new easier to use navigation menu. There's a new concept introduced here with apps. You can create multiple apps within your environment, and we'll talk about that, but also our, our UI, is responsive. Not only it's a responsive design that allows it to, to mold and morph itself between desktop, phone, and app for Outlook, as your experiences and your users use and personalize their experiences and different Zoom levels and accessibility needs, this UI responds to those experiences and provides the best of breed uh, interaction. Now, interacting with data is super important for business applications. We need to make sure we made significant improvements in data exploration. Now, we have a couple of new improvements. To, to that uh, use case. We got record set navigation, a new control will show you that's available uh, for, to making your users more productive. We have a completely different experience for da interactive dashboards and to new experience, you can start designing your new dashboards in. We've improved the core lookup experience. Now forms is where you do most of your data work. And the data work here is very important because our forms also repo. As there's more, more features and spaces that are available and pulled out by your users, the form reflows itself to show, to still continue surfacing the features and functionalities in the space available to them. Our new reference panel is a great example of one of those controls. And speaking of controls, you can not only use some of our new exciting out-of-the-box controls, but you can build your own. 
unified interface is the only place to benefit from some of these new opportunities. An opportunity to onboard to mobile and Outlook with, with ease. Using some of these new exciting controls and for both fields and views. Using the Power App Component Framework. Power App Component Framework is really exciting for our pro developers as you customize your application and an ability to embed Power App Canvas experiences. Those really rich, high interaction, really high fidelity user experiences that you can mold to anything that your business needs. You're able to bring those together within a unified interface and provide that experience to your users. Now we're going to continue investments in integration with Power BI by providing contextual Power BI into forms. So when you're in an account form, you'll see that the Power BI report in that account form can be pre-filtered for that account specifically, improving the productivity of your users. Now, all those things need to continue gaining in performance, not only in the UI experience of how fast the things render on the screen, but how efficiently your users are able to accomplish some of those tasks. Now, if we look specifically at the performance improvements over the web client, in our testing of the sample application, here are some of the averages that we're able to provide you. You're able to see your data faster, 63%. You're able to start working with data faster on forms by 33%, and able to gain insight from dashboards in 43% quicker loading time. You've been able to create new records and capture the business activities with ease as those forms are loading for you quicker. And as we all know from our mobile experiences, we need those apps to launch as fast as possible so we can get moving with our day. As you can see, the, the unified interface made improvements here in how fast it runs over the web client. But before we move on to the exciting visuals, let's summarize some of our value points of using this uh, unified interface. As we talked about the optimization of the investment, there's no dramatic reward. You get to realize your existing value of your investment of designing your application to your business needs. The core functionalities continue to work as designed, and there's no more big upgrade to plan. And in fact, this new interface is available to, for you to use today within your existing environment uh, for you to build your applications, leverage one of our pre-built applications. The introduction of the exciting UI not only provides the modern user experience, but allows you to re-engage your end users and can use as a platform to relaunch your, your program with the new user audiences. As you start new investments, it's important to roll those out on the new un unified interface and the new experience. Enhancements and productivities, users will be able to provide to do more in less time. And that's important when you're re-engaging the users. It's not just a pretty UI. They're also going to have a lot of improvements to their day-to-day -day work. And all of those improvements need to make sure that they're snappy and responsive as possible. And that improved performance allows you to do that. Again, letting you accomplish more tasks with less time. Now, the advantages of starting this migration effort as soon as possible are several. Talking about leveraging all the new investments, the features, and everything Microsoft is able to deliver, so there's none of those are available for you in the web client, but also, as we talked about, it's a little faster and more productive than ever for the end user. But more importantly, this early validation effort, if you begin that as soon as possible, will provide you a view on the actual effort required and give you to an ability to address some of the perception versus the actual reality of what it might mean for your organization to move to this new unified interface versus some of the perception of potentially this being a big comprehensive effort that you need to go through and help you position with the business, how much efforts can be required and start getting to some of those milestones uh, on, on your calendar. Informing Microsoft early of any of the blockers you'll be able to locate as early as possible will allow us to both provide you the solutions faster and give us more time to address any of those needs. Now, don't be afraid. We have a number of customers not only starting on this new experience, but have already made this transition journey. And we're confident you're going to find very few things, if any, uh, in this experience. Now, you're probably wondering, what happens to my application? So let's take a look and compare the unified interface versus the web client. Now, right off the bat, you're going to see an exciting new interface. And there's going to be a number of changes here in both how the top navigation bar appears to users and what we've done with the menu. We're going to dive into those. In the new navigation menu, you're going to see that it's always present. The old navigation menu, you had to click, hover, do some ex extensive horizontal scrolling. And those experiences were challenging to some of the users. 
In the new experience, the menu is always present and the navigation is still possible even if the menu is minimized. You're able to see that the user is able to navigate those experiences, change the area that they're navigating in, all without leaving the context of what they're working on with ease and permanence. Now, as we talked about, we still leverage your existing fundamentals. So the still same sitemap structural components are still there. You still got the groups, the items, and the areas. So if you've made customizations to your navigation experiences, we carry those forward on the new menu and allow you to regain your existing investment and provide your users um, an ease of comfort that not a lot of things have really moved. One of the ways we're really sensitive to brands and culture to making sure that their logo, their, their theme color are present. If we see that we made an improvement over the web client of getting rid of that first, first tile icon there uh, in a permanence of its color and allowing you to fully realize your brand color across the whole navigation bar, allowing you to one more time show that brand and that pride in your organization. Our out of the box themes support this experience fantastically. Again, if you made the customization or the logo changes within your theme, you'll get to realize that forward just as you have in the web client with an improvement. That dashboard those are important for you users to realize the, the, the data that they're working with. And we made improvements in not only taking um, uh, more, more screen space as it's available to the application, but also making some of the improvements within the charts themselves. And again, all those experiences work not only in the system dashboards that you've designed, but also continuing to operate those personal dashboards that users have configured, and they still stay in present for them when you, when you use the new application interface. Views are an important place where, you, where your organizational users view data. We made a number of improvements to the user experience here by reducing the header density and improving the actual row density within that. So not only we're on par, maybe even beating it by a little bit, we're allowing you to see more data and uh, at the same time with the web client. We continue to support not only your system design views, but also continue to make sure that personal views that your users have customized are available for them and they continue to do so. Forms is where a lot of the exciting changes are happening. But before we get to the changes, you need to know that your sections, columns, and field formatting, all of the layout, while it looks a little different to the user, is still here. The things are still in the familiar place, and you can optimize them as needed, but that investment still continues to be here with your form customizations. If you develop your business rules or any customizations, those continue working in the unified interface and are available to your users realizing your existing investment. The biggest change you probably can spot is actually what we've changed in terms of tabs. Now we improved the tabs in a number of ways that allows easier discoverability. On our new, for, on our new forms, the tabs are laid out across the top on the header. So you can always know that tabs are available for your business user across the form. And if you just scroll down on the form, you're gonna continue seeing the tab experience on top. So as you finish that last field on the bottom of your form, you're able to, and you scroll down, you're able to continuously see what other tabs are available for you within the header experience. The header even minimizes and gives more room to the form as well. It continues to provide all the capabilities. While we we'll look at what we had to do in the web client before, users have to scroll down and find the other tabs or make sure they don't forget about the tab that maybe is just below the screen um, that, they, that they needed to scroll to. And if they needed to collapse the area and focus on just one of the tabs, it used to eat the screen real estate available to them as you see here in this example. The timeline is important. Timeline is an important feature that we introduced in the web client. You had the ability to go between posts, activities, and notes, um, and to consume that data. In the new timeline, we've combined all those activity types in a single timeline, realizing the timeline capability for you to be able to see everything happening within and related to that record in one single timeline. You're still able to realize the types of activities that are presented within the timeline with new iconography on the right side. And you see that the density has been greatly improved over doubling the how many how many records you're able to see, and your users are able to realize more of the information within the same form that they're able to before compared to the web client. Now, business process is important to organizations as well, and we continue to make investments, and it works and operates just like it has before. 
We have a new compact business process flow bar that's available for your users. And users can click on that stage and see the records that are available. But if they don't like to, the pop-down experience, they can pin it to the side of the form and be able to work within the form while still seeing the process stages that are necessary and the fields necessary for them to complete. And we even remember that for the user. So when they come back to this record type again and they've pinned that experience, they're able to see that uh, experience stay as they've, uh, as they've intended to. Now you're wondering what's possible with some of these new features and capabilities when you use the unified interface. First, as we talked about expanding your existing investment from desktop to tablet to phone to Outlook, you know that this experience looks the same. There's immediate benefit to this, to training, onboarding, as the experience is the same across all the form factors. The customizers are gonna love this because the experience, they have to think less about the capabilities between the, the access points and focus on realizing business pro uh, productivity investments and capabilities that they're developing for you. If you're a customer that are already using the mobile experience, you're using the unified interface experience today already. So you already went through the journey of experiencing some of the unified interface capabilities. And if you expand that experience into App for Outlook very easily, as you already had the form laid out for you, and you can go through and experience those across all the experiences uh, like desktop. So all you need to do is add in the experiences that are missing from your desktop application and expand your mobile experience, not only allowing your desktop users to consume the experience with full capability, but also continue that capability within the mobile client as well, as the experience and application is, and features are the same. And we talked about new controls. Now, some of our new controls are against fields. Some of our new controls are against views. For example, here, that's a classic example of your activities view. That activities view is easier to orient the context on when you're viewing it on the calendar. Not only these activities you can use or any of our out-of-the-box entities, you can use any of your custom entities as well on this experience. So when you use a date field, and configure the experience and the users just see the value of it within the application, be able to easier orient themselves on any of these date-oriented data sets. When we talk about consuming data, we have a net new capability with interactive dashboards that user interface brings to the table. You're, hearing it, you're seeing in this use case, I'm filtering the record set here by a number of charts. Or before in the web client, you only had one chart to work with. And you always had to build a view or a dashboard that was specific to a specific quarter time. And you had to continuously rebuild those and filter those experiences for your users. Now you can provide one interactive dashboard with a view of data, provide any of the chart experiences, allow them to filter by those charts, and also be able to take that data and put a date range filter as they need it. If we go from that dashboard or any of our other experiences onto the list of data, onto the record itself, we're able to actually realize value and productivity by using our new record set navigation capability. When you're on the form without leaving the context of the form, you can go and expand an area where you get to see the set of records you just came from. So if you came from a filtered view, or view itself on the dashboard. If you've done some searching on it, it came from a dashboard or a new interactive dashboard, the set of records that you filtered the data set to continues with you on the form, then you're able to quickly switch between those records without leaving the form, allowing the users to realize better productivity as they, as they navigate and operate with those records. Now our views have some improvements to the dynamic reflow. What we mean by that is if you see on the left side, you're seeing a more mobile-like presentation of the view. It's because the space available to that view is not enough to show the great experience in its full best capability. You're able to customize that if you disagree in the spaces that you need. But what this allows the users to do is make sure they can still realize the value of that data, depending on the size of the screen, the zoom level, and everything they have going for you. As a configurator, you can make intentional choices of how this experience works to be able to support your users' needs within your business application. And another example here, you're seeing how a dashboard based on a zoom level of almost 200% is able to still realize value, but is converting itself to a space that's better used for the user when they're in that experience and the space available to the views. 
the forms. The forms could be supercharged by unified interface in a number of areas. First on the left side, you see that the customer's rating is immediately obvious to you what the rating is. And that's one of our new star rating controls that you can use on one of the fields and allows our users to immediately realize what the data contains. And there's other controls available for you to manage interaction with data on the form in a more exciting way than ever. And it works from desktop to phone and how for Outlook experiences. Now, if you needed to do more than our out-of-the-box controls, the Power App Component Framework, which we ourselves use to develop this technology as well, is available to you. In this example here, you're seeing a business developing a set of KPIs that are available to provide high impact visual uh, display of data that allows the user to immediately be able to realize what type of a customer they're working on, where they are in the specific uh, subsets of the business process or uh, other factors as well. Now this is a pro developer feature. So if, you use, if your customizer is using web resources, this is a net new capability that provides a more meaningful and stronger experience. When we talk about Canvas app embedding, what's amazing and fantastic about the ability to have that experience is you don't have a fear of missing out. If you started your business application and you were enthused by the experiences presented in the Power Apps and Power Platform presentations, don't feel left behind. You can bring those experiences to your existing forms within the Dynamics business application, not only realizing the full freedom of layout design that the Canvas application allows you to do on top of Dynamics 365 customer engagement and CDS data, but you're also able to use and connect that data using power connectors to over 200 data sources and provide some of that data and even process integration within that experience. We make a, a we're a first party experience for Microsoft Flow, and that's also available for you with Dynamics 365 uh, application and for you to use within the Canvas application uh, itself. Now the Power App Component Framework, while we have a lot of the samples to get you going and build your own controls, the community has loved that experience. The community for the last few months has been generating a lot of exciting new controls. Many of them you can realize as, a, as an inspiration or use as an example that's provided by the author. Those experiences are amazing. We're really excited to see what our customers, partners, and the community is able to do with the new capability um, enriching the user experience and the business productivity of your users. Speaking of business productivity, our new control here called reference control allows you to kind of containerize a set of other controls. So whether it be subgrids or other experiences onto the, on the form. So the user doesn't have to leave the case form to see other cases, navigate knowledge base information, be able to act on that information within this experience all without leaving the form. That allows you to once for all, first of all, save the space on the form, but be able to interact with that data. You can customize what controls and, and, and experiences you place within the actual tabs of the reference panel and be able to customize the icons to your business needs. And it's fully under your control to customize. Now, this whole concept of building multiple applications. If you've seen our applications between sales and customer service available to you as the first party applications, we reference applications we ship, you can actually develop your own applications. And let's talk about a couple of use cases and scenarios for where that's possible for us. First of all, when you think of these applications, think of them as just containers, containers for you to just organize in, um, into an application experience, views, forms, and dashboards. And you can make those experiences role specific and provide the permissions to access them. So for example, a sales manager here has an application that's tailored to just their needs. They have a sales manager application that they know is available to them. You can either make it their only experience or provide them an ability to still access that actual sales application. But the good news is it's the same environment. So you don't have to actually rebuild or, or fear that you're gonna break some kind of a capability uh, in your fundamentals around your data security or your existing customizations. It's just providing a better, more tailored experience. So the sales manager only has the sales manager dashboards that are relevant to them, the views that are specific to them, and the form that's tailored to their experience. You could enable that experience without having to rebuild your application fully. You see that the salesperson here also sees a renewal uh, application that's available for them that focuses them on the renewal season. An example of that is you have a dashboard that's burned down of all of your accounts or contacts that you needed to go through during your renewal cycle and, it, and prioritizes the views and the type of forms that showcase and surface the, the relevant data 
front and center for that specific activity that you may be engaged in seasonally, then providing an application that's focused on that experience will allow for faster and more robust user productivity around those experiences. Now, switching applications, there's a number of ways that you can switch between those applications. We still have the application switcher available to you as we had before, and that still stays here and continues to show uh, anywhere within the application. When you make the transition to unified interface only mode, and you're not writing the web client anymore, when the users go to the URL of your application as they do today, if they have access to more than one application, we present them the list of applications for them to choose. Now those applications also have friendly URLs. So if they like to shortcut those, URLs, those specific applications on their favorites, they're able to do so. And obviously if the user only has access to one application, we'll launch them straight into that application without delay. All of this can be configured and controlled for you within the experience that, that, that's available to your customizers and administrators to be able to deliver the capability. So finally, we get to the call to action. It's really to start. We talked about the number of reasons for you to start within this application experience and get to the realizing and evaluating the experience for your users. We explained in this presentation why Microsoft made investment into unified interface, why it's our primary focus of investment. You've seen some of the value proposition for moving to the unified interface migration, and hopefully you loved what you've seen. As we finish the initiate chapter, we welcome you to continue exploring the playbook and experiencing that into explore chapter, where we dive deeper into setting up your own test application parallel to your existing experiences. Talk about how to actually launch a pilot application. What do you need to do with this transition and have a supporting article specifying how to make that transition. During the transition phase, we're going to help you with planning and execution of how to make that transition and some of the options uh, that are presented to you as you think about this journey. And in chapter four in optimization, as you always continue evolving your business application, what steps can you take to use and leverage the unified interface to support you along that journey? As you see in the resources, we're gonna launch a full community experience for you with the playbook, white papers, a lot of useful content and supporting articles, videos, an interaction place for you to engage with others on the forum and continue reading our blog. So check back those resources quickly for you. And at this point, we're gonna to get to the Q&A. Thank you, Nikita. I think we have a couple of questions on the Q&A panel. So uh, one of those questions, I will just go over it is, can we now use Power BI dashboards seamlessly? In earlier versions, integrating customized Power BI dashboards using premium workspace was not straightforward. I think we're gonna continue investing in Power BI technology, but we'll have to follow up specifically on that question. Okay, thank you. So another question is, what is the best way to access uh, unified interface apps when user needs to access apps across multiple organizations within the same tenant? Excellent question. One of the areas that you can also navigate the applications is home.dynamics.com. When you go to home.dynamics.com, you'll see all of the apps modules that are available across all of your tenants, that the all, all of the instances within the tenant that the user is logged into. So if you go to home.dynamics.com, you'll see all of the applications that are available across your multiple instances, if, you, if, if that's your deployment model, including some of the power apps as well. So they're gonna show up in that experience as well. Also, if you're using the application switcher, that drop down right next to your logo that shows your applications within the tenant, if you go to the, uh, all applications, you'll see the um, navigation experience expand and show you other applications from the rest of your uh, organization that are available within the tenant for that user. So definitely try that out and let us know how that goes. So we had a question around, um, uh, as a customer, do I need to upgrade in order to um, to be able to see the unified interface or does it happen automatically? So great question. The good news is the unified interface is already in your system today. 
if you're using the web client today only for desktop experiences, uh, it's available for you as a customizer. It's not lit up for your users um, automatically. As a customizer, you can assign roles to one of our applications. You'll see them listed today at Sales Hub or Customer Service Hub. If you're using our mobile experience, that, app, that experience is already lit up for your mobile users. Or if you're using our app for Outlook experience, you know that you've, you have a choice to customize the app for Outlook experience as well within its application, and that's available to you. But the good news is you're not planning a major upgrade or downtime within this application. It's just a new interface. It's always available to you. It will allow that for an easy transition from the web client. In fact, we'll talk about it in chapters two, three, and four, various strategies around deploying and launching your unified interface that best suits your needs for your business. So you can continue potentially to use the web client and launch some of the new focused applica app application modules that are available for your users. And as you continue onboarding new organizations, you can maybe create an application available for them. And when you're ready to transition your full application as well, you can do so uh, as you choose, but there's no upgrade. There's no milestone to wait for Microsoft. In fact, you can start this today. We had a number of new customers, obviously already starting on this, started on this experience and existing customers that's already made this transition and there's no upgrade for them to plan. In fact, you can launch at any date and time that you need as the application experience is available to you today and right now. Had another question. Uh, what is the best way to access UCI apps when the user needs to access applications across multiple organizations within the same tenant? Yeah, similar to the to the to the previous question before that, you have the drop down of the of the application uh, available to you within the within the experience that's available, and you can go to home that dynamics. And if you did disable the web client experience and you went to unified interface only mode and have that documentation and supporting mode and that feature is live today for you to use, once you enable that experience, if the user has access to more than one application within that same time, they'll see those experiences. Now, if you wanted to see the applications beyond that specific instance or environment, you need to click the application mode and see all apps or go to home.dynamics.com, which presents them that. Now, also important to remember that all of the app modules, the applications that you build, have a friendly URL that you get to define and customize. So you're able to take your take your um, URL that you use today to access Dynamics will be forward slash apps and forward slash whatever you, whatever you need. So if I needed to create an application URL for my renewal season application, say I wanted to keep it simple, I'm going to provide my Dynamics URL forward slash apps forward slash renewal. And I'll be able to surface that and train it to my users and be able to place that as a shortcut and desktop or save it to favorites to be able to access it. If I had another application within maybe customer service business runs on its own instance within my organization, I want to provide a quick way for them to access that application. Now I can drill down and access that application within the application selector and go to all apps and see that there, go to home.dynamics and see all my applications or provide a shortcut URL for my users to be able to navigate to that experience quickly. So in, their, <clears throat> so in their links or favorites, they can have the renewal season, the sales app and customer service app. And because they're logged into the same tenant, if that's how the configuration that you have, they'll be able to experience those applications and move between them. So another question, um, will um, the unified interface still support uh, web resources and iframes or is there another recommended approach? So web resources and iframes still continue to function. The web resources that you design, as long as you continue to follow the API guidance that we provided and you're using the latest um, non-deprecated method, and you can use a solution checker, by the way, as a great tool to check that your customizations are using the latest supported method methods. If you continue to use those experiences and, and your code is great, the web resources will continue to work in the unified interface. But what's important to realize as you make new investments, let's say you're building a new application. If you're building a new application add-on within, uh, within the web resource, I urge you to take a look at Power Apps component framework. Now, on Surface, it sounds like Power Apps. I don't want to build Power App. I'm just trying to build maybe a customized experience. Take a look at Power App component framework because it's exactly that experience. It's web resources on steroids. It's supercharged. 
It allows a more declarative, more structured way for you to build controls. Your developers are going to love it because it uses the latest development technologies, has the latest tooling. So it's actually an even better experiences than web resources, but your existing web resources will continue to work uh, and iframes continue to work as they have before. Any other one, questions? Yeah. I think it's one more question. Uh, will customization change for UCI? Well, the way you customize the system is still the same. You still define the, 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 the design of your forms and views and dashboards in the same way before. We are introducing a new maker experience that you can use from Power Platform. That's the benefit of Dynamics being part of the Power Platform. The CDS, technology that you're using, it's the exact same technology uh, that, you, that you've been using in Dynamics. So you already have all of the experiences and skill sets. So you can either use the existing experience today and as we make parity and introduce the full features in the Make That Power Apps experience for Dynamics customizers, you'll be able to use that. A couple examples of that. The new view designer in Power Apps uh, uh, Studio allows you to design a view with that's any pixel width that you need. Well, in Dynamics, you had to pick from a set of five. Right? Be able to easier, more personalized ability, provide a way for you to design a view that fits just exactly the needs of your business. In the form designer, in Power Apps that make, the new form designer allows you to see the preview of the form, how it appears in unified interface. So if you're doing some of that layout work and you want to save yourself uh, some of the experience to see how it's going to be realized uh, in the new experience, you can use as you're logged on, and you're a customizer within your dynamic system today, just go to makethatpowerapps.com, navigate to your environment, go to your solutions and find your forms and views uh, within that experience. And we're very focused on making sure that those have full feature parity to your existing environments. But the good news is you're modifying the same exact metadata customizations that your existing application has. So it's the same application. You can continue leveraging and optimize your existing investment in your customizations. And we provide both not only the new player, for the actual end users, but you as a customizer get to start using some of these experiences within the Make That Power Apps uh, Studio experience. Hopefully that answered it. If, 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 if there was a different question, please clarify. We'll, we'll, we'll answer it right away. I think that's it for now. Wonderful. Well, absolutely. Thank you for your time and investment. And I'll let my hosts wrap up the call for us. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Nikita. So, so just as a reminder to everyone that is interested in uh, the follow-up uh, chapters. So on the 26th of July, at the same time, we'll have chapter two. On the 19th of August, chapter three, and the last chapter for this unified interface uh, series is the 26th of August. So thank you for your time and hope to see you again on the next event. Thank you.